Hi and welcome to this hands-on session on AWS Simple Queue Service. I'm Maham Tariq from Skillcub and in this lab we'll learn how SQS works. Here are the steps that we'll follow in this lab. After logging into my AWS account, I'll open the SQS console from AWS Management and create a new queue. I'll send and receive messages and then finally I'll attach this queue to a Lambda function as a trigger and see what happens when I populate this queue with new messages. So let's get started. To open the SQS console, you can search it from all services or just write SQS in the search bar. Here on this page, we can see information about Amazon SQS, how it works, its benefits and use cases. We'll now go and create our new queue. For that, click on click create a queue. First, we have to select the type of the queue. There are two different types. The major difference is that standard queue delivers messages to the consumers at least once and the message order is not preserved. While the first in first out queue messages are delivered exactly once and the messages are sent and received in order. After we select the type of queue, we have to give it a name. In the configuration tab, we have several settings. Visibility timeout is the time period you specify for the queue item which is when fetched and processed by the consumer is made hidden from the queue and other consumers. The default setting is 30 seconds. You can configure the Amazon SQS message retention period to a value from 1 minute to 14 days. The default is for 4 days. Once the message retention quota is reached, your messages are automatically deleted. Delay queues let you postpone the delivery of new messages to consumers for a number of seconds from 0 to 20 seconds. Next we have encryption. It's optional. With this enabled, we can use server-side encryption with AWS KMS. For this demo, we are going to disable it. Next is the access policy. By default, only the account owner has access to the queue, but the permissions can be changed to allow access by any user. If unrestricted access to queue is allowed, anyone can manage the queue. We will stick with the basic in this demo. Next is the dead letter queue. Messages that can't be delivered due to the client errors or server errors are held in the dead letter queue for further analysis or reprocessing. Let's hit create. Now that the queue is created, you can see various information about the queue. Now we can start sending and receiving messages to the queue. For that, click on send and receive messages, type your message in the message body, I'll type in, hi this is my first SQS message. You can also set delivery delay and message attributes. Now let's send the message. We can see the message in the messages available. To poll for messages, click on the poll for messages button. After the polling is complete, you can click on the message. Here we can see the body, details and attributes of the message. We can also see sender's information. You can see how easy it actually is to use SQS. Now to connect this queue to the Lambda function, let's make a new function. Type Lambda in the search bar and click on Lambda. You'll be redirected to the AWS Lambda console. Click on Create function. For this exercise, we'll leave it on Author from scratch. You can call it whatever you want. For runtime, we'll go with Python 3.9. For architecture, you may want to select ARM64 because it's a little bit cheaper. For permissions, we do need to make a setting change. We need a role for our Lambda function so that it has the permission to connect to our queue and process messages. You can create a new role with basic Lambda permissions. It, the permission it needs are SQS receive message, delete message and get attributes. So you'll need to attach these in this case. To do this in a simpler way, I'll just create a new role from AWS policy templates. Name the role and click on search bar here. Type SQS to filter it down and select Amazon SQS polar permissions. Now just click on create. Now we need to wire up our queue to this Lambda function. Go to function overview and click on add trigger. It's going to ask us the event source. We'll select our queue from here. I leave the trigger button disabled for now to see the difference it makes. Batch size is the number of records to send to the function in each batch. For a standard queue, this can be up to 10,000 records. 
Batch window control allows you to set the maximum amount of time in seconds that Lambda spends gathering records before invoking the function. But I'll leave this at default for now and then click on add. Now you can see it has popped up here. Its state is disabled. If we click on it, we can see various settings. Now let's go back to the SQS console and send messages. Now I will populate the queue with a few random messages. And as we do this, we can see the messages available have changed to four. Now let's go back and enable the trigger on the Lambda function. So this should change. In the Lambda function, click on the trigger and then click on edit. Then I'll now just select the enable trigger option and click on save. The change of settings will take a minute or so. Let's go back to the SQS console and hit refresh. You can see the number of messages available has turned to zero. It means something has pulled these messages from the queue. That's all we needed for this demo. You can also go to the monitor tab and explore the CloudWatch log. It has created several logs for the every message that we've sent. It's a good practice to delete the cloud resources that you no longer need. So we'll delete the Lambda function that we've created. We'll also go back to the SQS console and delete the SQS queue that we created. For that, simply select the queue and click on delete. That's all for this demo.